Hi, welcome. Hi everyone, welcome. We're just waiting on everyone to join on in. I need some, uh, I need some like, hey, plug this in. This thing will die. Wait there. Hi everyone, we'll be beginning at 7.30, okay? Thank you for waiting. Hello. Hi, Senator. We'll be beginning soon. Okay. Uh, in five minutes. Okay. So Unless I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. You have others? Yeah. On. Okay. Okay, everyone. So for this video, um, I'm going to ask you to mute yourselves until you have something to say. Okay. okay. 
Then when you speak, unmute, right? Yes. Okay, Kira, I'm gonna switch over to my computer. Okay, I see you. I just admitted you. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one. Come on, let me leave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lynn, write up, write up the changes on there and send it back to me. It's... Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to ask you to mute your microphones until you... Yeah, we have three. So, do you mean write in the word three or spell out three? Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everybody. We'll just wait for everybody to come on. I think, are the Okimoto's on? I'm not sure if they're on yet. Let me text to see if they're on. Okay. Hey, I want that back. Michael, you have to use the bathroom. I don't think they need to hear me. I think they need it. Now what's happening? Where is everyone? Yeah, I just texted Kit. Where are they? It's new technology, people, so we'll give them a, a minute. Yes, Lena. Let's go, please.
Okay, I have somebody trying to come into mine over here. Does it, are they trying on your side here? Yes. Uh, Josh Green is in. Hey everyone, okay. Lieutenant Governor's in. Hello, Lieutenant Governor. Okay. And then, let's see, I just texted. Is there a way we can reach out to them? Yeah, I can, I can uh, call. Okay. So you Kyle Okimoto is on as well. Okay. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Lynn. How come I cannot? Oh, there is everybody. Holy. Okay. Okay, you are. Okay, you are. Cool. Okay. Thanks. Um, here, um, Repticoin is coming in under Kui. Okay, I just yeah. uh, admitted her. Okay. Okay, then we're just waiting for um, the Oki Motos to come on. Thanks, LG, for joining us. Appreciate it. And we have um, Janice also on, yeah? Janice Kaluni. Hi, Janice. Thanks, all. Hi, Janice. Thanks, all. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Okay, there we did. There's hey, a, if, you're on your, if you're on your computer, there's a, on the upper right side, there's a thing called gallery view. If you click on that, it'll show everybody who's on. Yes. Oh, cool. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody can see everybody at the same time. The one who's speaking will have a, a green line around them. And then our moderator is uh, Kiwer Sulunga from the Senate um, Communications Office. Hi, everyone. Here. So we also have with us Lieutenant Governor um, Josh Green, who's a medical doctor, and also Janice Kalanikuia from Molokai General. So Kid, we'll turn it over to you once you got all, if you think everybody's here or you wanna wait a little bit longer. And just to make sure, can everyone put themselves on mute until they are spoken to or they have something to say? Thank you. Yeah, so and just when you want to speak, you got to hit the, the mic button and then unmute, speak and then take it off of mute. Okay. Uh, you know, Carl, do you want to begin? Okay, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. The only reason I'm not using my video is because I've been getting a lot of phone calls from um, from the Maui mayor's office and, you know, between the senators and, and, and so, I gotta put my phone in. um, we do have some good news. We were able to get a company that is going to be able to go to the store hopefully as early as tomorrow morning that can, uh, sanitize, disinfect everything. Um, so it was really amazing. We, we spent the last few hours trying to get companies to go and, um, Mayor Victorino stepped in, got a company, and just made it happen with the snap of the fingers. So we really have to yeah, applaud. Yeah, what so he's doing guys, there. Mayor Victorino, huge by just making making phone calls and getting a company over there to sanitize and disinfect and clean the store. And also, I think he's also going to contact Kevin Masaki to see if Kevin Masaki wants um, the company to do a preemptive cleaning there as well. So Mayor Victorino stepped up huge because we contacted like four other companies on Oahu and you know, they just didn't have the equipment or couldn't fly over. So that's, that's so all. Serious, it's freaking... We're going to do that for you guys. So we're, we're, I'm, I'm happy for that. So there'll be... Still put the stupid... No, but I got it, no. That... Yeah. Hey. Hey, Kyle. Okay. Um, 
you know, maybe, maybe just for everyone's sake, uh, you know, what, just to go over what happened very, you know, briefly is that the one person tested positive that you all work with and you all know, um, he's in Honolulu. We've asked the Lieutenant Governor to come on and, uh, to answer your medical questions or maybe give a briefing on what happens next because then there's a screening process and then there's a, you know, not everybody gets tested. Uh, they go through a screening process. So Lieutenant Governor, maybe you want to explain that for to everyone. Thank you, Senator. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Josh. I'm very sorry, you know, to hear that this happened, but it's going to be okay. Uh, when, when we have a friend that gets or a family member that gets uh, tested and is positive for COVID-19 and it stands for, as you know, coronavirus, COV. The D is the disease. That's usually pneumonia. And then 2019, when that happens, uh, obviously we worry that if we were in close contact that we could catch it. The, some of this stuff is under debate, but basically it's a virus that uh, it causes upper respiratory illness like, um, well, the top symptoms are fever, number one, cough, dry cough, and shortness of breath, though there's a lot of other stuff that can happen. After an average of, if you've, if you've caught it, after being exposed, the average number of days till you show symptoms is five days, 5.2 days is the number of days, and then you could have symptoms, though you could have caught it and not have symptoms for some time. People have varying degrees of symptoms from this virus. It's very contagious because we don't have any immunity to it. So if you were, say, very close to the person and you didn't know they were sick, you know, it's, it is certainly possible that you caught it, no guarantees at all. Most people are going to be totally fine. 80% of people have no symptoms whatsoever. And then the other 20% of us will have like the symptoms I described or end up, you know, getting quite sick. I, I don't know the circumstance of the person that, uh, that got ill today. Um, Kalani, you could tell me, but usually someone gets short of breath and that's why they get in the hospital. Is that kind of what happened? My my understanding was he went to the, the hospital with uh, flu-like symptoms, and from that from there it went. Yeah. yeah. So that's it's it often is confused or is very similar to the flu, and so first thing that happens is you get swabbed with, when there's no questions. We don't know. You get swabbed for the flu, and then when the flu is negative nowadays, because COVID nineteen is on everybody's mind, everybody's mind, you get swabbed as a nasal swab through your nose, uh, and you get tested. And if you're positive, then usually you're gonna recover at home, but if you have any bad respiratory issues, then the hospital is necessary. So we're seeing about one out of 100 people that get COVID-19, so it's still pretty rare, ending up needing serious hospital care. It's much more severe for our kupuna. It's, um, it's, it can be fatal, not usually for young people at all. Young people are barely having any symptoms. Middle-aged people like uh, me and Kalani, we, uh, you know, middle symptoms. And then for our kupuna, it can be risky. So if we're 75, the mortality rate goes up higher. So we're really, really sensitive about if any, if any of our seniors were, say, at, at the store or in contact with, with the patient. So we'll do a screening. We won't, Kalani was very smart. Senator was very smart. Uh, we're not going to call it testing. We're going to call it screening so that people don't get up in a big huff about it. But the, I guess a team will come in. I, I think you already arranged somebody, yeah? Yes, actually, you know, we have Janice Kalanihui on, on with us. She's the director of Molokai General. You want to explain, Janice, what we're going to do? Sure. Hi, Josh. Hi, everyone. Hey, Janice. Tomorrow, we're going to start screening uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You can come up to the hospital. Uh, we'd like you to call and make an appointment. Uh, if you can't do that, just get in your car and come on up. We're going to have someone outside the clinic and ready to screen you. Um, and as Josh said, some people may get tested and other people may not. So it's not guaranteed that if you show up, you're going to get tested. They're going to ask you some questions and they're going to use their discretion whether you should be screened or not at this time or tested or not at this time. I guess I just want everyone to know that the hospital's prepared. We've been working 12, 14 hours a day for the past month because we knew this was coming at some point and we're prepared to take care of you. Queens is in constant contact with you. They're really supportive of us and our needs here. So I just want you to be assured in that way. 
excellent. You're in a good spot because also everybody, where our population is um, less dense, it's less likely to spread. And because we are not dealing with the major metropolis center in Molokai, I think you're going to be okay. Probably not a lot of spread. Whereas people in Honolulu, when they're constantly clustered, they, you know, there's just a lot more people to cough and sneeze and so on. So, um, so that's what's been going on. We've had uh, 285 cases in the state, and by tomorrow we'll count some more for sure. Like, like our our loved one on Molokai, and we're getting tests back usually. Well, there's two scenarios. If they are able to run them here, it'll be the next day because they'll they'll send them by plane from Molokai, I would assume, uh, over to Oahu, and they can run the test. And Janice will be able to advocate for that, and, and Senator and, and Rep will be able to advocate for that. If they go to the mainland, it can take a lot longer. And I think we should try to – we should have our healthcare providers say same day because it's a very close community, and we spend a lot of personal time together um of course in the community so i don't think people should be too scared the times i get scared is when it's someone who's older and they have underlying health problems like maybe they already have heart disease or lung disease or cancer then it's it's more worrisome uh but we've been through this a lot we we have plenty of health care we have plenty of service at your hospital and if someone has to come over to queens over here no problem we've got many many intensive care unit beds and ventilators if god forbid someone's breathing went out uh maybe i maybe if people have some general questions i could answer them uh mainly you'll you'll get screened tomorrow if anyone's got fever or cough or shortness of breath they're going to definitely do the test uh and probably if you were working very closely with the um the patient like you were in close quarters pretty likely also So if anybody has questions for the Lieutenant Governor, uh, just hit your unmute button and ask. Hey, Kalani, just wanted to weigh in um, with the employees and, and the owner, um, with Chris Guys. Uh, first of all, guys, I just wanted to let you guys know this. Um, thank you, LG. Thanks, um, Kalani. Thanks, Janice. Um, we've been running live, and we've asked the community to want to abide by the stay-at-home. Um, I hate to tell you guys that we should have listened, um, but now we're going to try and figure out how we can do this together. Um, you guys know what's been happening on Molokai, that when we try to move medical teams in, we've been hit with people trying to like not bring them in. We've been having a lot of stuff on social media about tourists coming in. So now that all of you are listening, this is one of our own, yeah? Um, COVID-19 never discriminate. But now we are here to try and support everybody so that we can make sure we get the medical needs that we have that is going to be coming in, whatever we can do to help Molokai General. Thank you, Janice. Um, Molokai General has been hit with criticism. And I'll tell you right now, I was just up there with Janice. She's fully capable and ready, and the staff is putting their own selves at risk now. So, you know, just notice, you guys, if we just do what we're supposed to self-quarantine, we stand to not have to deal with this and the resources that have to be moved to Molokai when Honolulu is facing huge issues. I mean, they get major issues. You know, LG has not been sleeping as I know. Um, but if you guys have any questions, now is the time to ask it since we have LG to answer those questions as well as Janice and Senator English. But I wanted to thank my um, colleagues that are out there that have supported us and will continue to support us on Molokai. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. I get one question. I get one question. So my my daughter get um, what was it called? Respiratory issues. Respiratory issues, and I was wondering, I was getting knowing if I should be worried about that or not, because this virus is pretty serious. And she was in. Yeah. <clears throat> what was that? What did you say, hon? Sister, what she was in what? She she uh, she already caught a regular virus, just a normal day-to-day -day virus, and she was hospitalized for over a week in Kapiolani already. Okay. So is, if she catches this, is this going to be like 100 times worse for her or like probably the same? 
very good question. Kids have been pretty, um, pretty good with this virus. Very, very minimal symptoms for most keiki. There was one child that, look, there's been many thousands of serious cases and deaths on the whole, you know, all across the world. But then there's been almost no kids, like only one or two that I saw on the mainland that ended up being very badly affected by COVID-19. So for some reason, it doesn't seem to be affecting kids very much. You'll be careful, you know, but it's been pretty good. I wouldn't worry extra. If your kid, your kid probably has like reactive airway disease, which is, how, how old is she? Little, it's like two? Months. She's five months. Yeah, so she's got reactive airway disease and that just means her lungs get wheezy probably and yeah. she gets short of breath, right? So yeah, this is that time of the year to get that kind of thing. So I think, I think she'll be okay, but you watch her carefully and really lay low. You know, as long as you guys aren't sick and you're staying mostly at home, you're not gonna catch it. And it should be, should be fine, but keep an eye on her for fever or wheezing. Look at her chest, make sure the breathing is nice and easy. Uh, but if she has no fever, you're good. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Oh, I got one question too. Yes. Yeah, so like me, I only live with my grandma. My grandma's there all my life. My grandma's 99 years old right now. And she's been watching the news a lot, tripping out. And lately, you can ask any other cashiers how much fucking cough drops I had to buy for her and Vic. So, like, I just, like, I, I like know if there's any, like, other type of symptoms I got to watch on for my grandma. I don't know if she get them now, but I know she's been coughing kind of a lot, but she seems all right. But, you know, any other symptoms I should look out for just because, you know, I like my grandma's safe now. My grandma's the only one there for me. So, she almost 99 years old. And I heard that this virus is hitting the old people bad. So, that's the problem. I'm kind of tripping out right now. Yeah. She's probably going to live to be 130, but we'll be careful, all right? So the first thing you got to worry about is just make sure nobody gets near her more than six feet near her. And if anyone does have cough or other symptoms around her, um, definitely keep them out. Stay away, right? In fact, anyone else is sick, they should wear a mask anywhere near her. Because she's had a cough persistently, and I don't know if she's getting around a lot, but if she's been around any of the folks in the community. Now my grandma, she only stay home. That's all she do, stay home. The thing I worried about is I don't want to cook her meals. You know, sometimes I wash her clothes. So I don't know if I infect it and I give it on to her. So that's my main focus. Like, should I stop washing her clothes and, and cooking for her and stuff like that? Or now You can do that stuff. That's okay. Actually cooking and so on. You probably should make sure you keep six feet distance from her. And then, you know, it is true that some of us can catch the virus and not even have any symptoms and then transmit it. So what I would do is if you if you have not had fever or cough or shortness of breath, very, very unlikely that you have COVID-19 and going, you look healthy. Okay. So I would say, don't worry too much, but do keep a little distance. And if you'd like, you could take her over when it's quiet and have her check just to be double safe, but cause she's had that cough, but honestly, pretty unlikely. I think it's pretty unlikely that she's got it. And usually the symptoms only last about five, six days. So if she's had a cough for a while, it's because it's cold and flu season. And I'm sure that's what it is. All right, man. Thank you, bro. You bet. Um, i like to ask a question. So should we all go up tomorrow to get screened or just those who feel like they have symptoms? That's a great question. So if you have no symptoms whatsoever, no fever, no cough, and no shortness of breath, and you weren't in contact with the person that, um, who, who, who was it? Was it a, a man or a woman or what was the deal? It was a man. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If, if the guy that, that was sick, right? If, and you didn't have any contact with them at all in the last like two weeks, you probably are not going to need to be checked. They, they will likely go through those symptoms with you and say, you don't need to be screened. Um, but if, honestly, if you have concerns, it's a small community, go over there. I think for peace of mind, if you have any concern at all, and you know, I know it's like you saw the, someone saw the guy and then they saw you, then it's going to be pretty quick. You're going to wonder whether you got it. So don't hesitate to stop in and get checked out. I think it's okay. 
you know, you. Um, my, my recommendation really for everybody is go for the screening um, because they, they will ask you questions, you know, and about proximity, all of this stuff. And if they feel you need testing, then they'll go to that, that point. But just as a matter of, you know, to be able to have peace of mind for each of you and also um, for the company and for everybody on Molokai, it's better to just go for the screening. My recommendation, just go do it tomorrow. Yeah. That's the circumstance that I think that's good advice from Senator uh, English because we had, um, was Kualoa Ranch had one of their workers who, you know, everybody there is also the same thing, every, hugging everybody, kissing everybody, hanging out, right? That's kind of the way. And they did screen a bunch of people. And I, and I don't know, probably a couple people tested positive. Remember, don't worry too much. For most people, it's going to be fine. It's scary to watch on the news, but I would say the Molokai people are at least two times tougher than anybody on Oahu, so it should be fine. Okay, I have a question, please. Yes. So that I get this straight. So if we were exposed to this person two weeks ago, would we show some symptoms by now, if, we, if anything? It's possible. It's, here's the way it normally works. If you have COVID-19 like he did, right? He probably was asymptomatic for four, five, six, seven days and then started having symptoms. During those days, he could have been infectious. And then I don't know how long he was coughing or sneezing or whatever at the store, but it's usually five or six days until you either get better or it gets much worse. So if, if you saw him at all in the last two weeks, you, that's an exposure. And if you were within six feet and, you're, and you weren't wearing any mask or anything, there's, there's some risk. There's some risk that you, you caught the virus from him. Again, pretty low. I mean, you really have to spend time face to face within six feet for some time to be likely to catch it. But, you know, it, it can be transmitted that way. Mostly people are really infectious when they're having the symptoms like lots of fever, lots of cough and so on. That's when you're most infectious. Uh, so yeah. you just have to just gauge how much time you had with them and that should tell you. Yeah, so like it, two weeks later, like we would have been showing some type of symptom, at least a cough or a fever or something, if, if anything, because it's been yeah, about very, two weeks. Very likely. I, you're, you're, it's extremely unlikely that you caught COVID-19 from him. But, you know, he may have passed it to two other people and they were symptomatic and you might have had lunch, you know, at the diner or whatever with them. Right. So it, it's a little hard to say. That's why. Because right now you're doing we're going to probably figure out whether or not this person was in contact with a, a whole bunch of other people and any of them get sick. That's what what we do is we contact Trace, which in Molokai, it's kind of like everybody in this town. Right. Because it's very, very close to everyone. So people that that guy was in contact with are at higher risk and if any of them caught it then the people around them but it sounds to me like there's not a bunch of people all feeling sick right now i, I don't know i haven't asked but i no one told me that i have a question sure. what if we shared a computer uh like if you were hanging out and sitting right next to each other then that would be proximity no, like teasing. if he was on the computer, then I got on the computer. Pretty low risk. It can be on surfaces, and it has to go from the surface to your hands and then to your mouth or eyes or nose. But it's, it's much more like, so if he was there an hour before you and then you were on the computer, not likely. Much more likely if you spent time talking to each other. So probably not. Uh, that's, a, that's a very low risk exposure. Okay. Cuz I'm out girlfriend was working. Yeah, I'm out sick right now and um I think this would be about I suppose to actually if I didn't get any better I'm supposed to go a test for the covid tomorrow the doctor said but since you're doing a screening I guess I can just go up and do it. Yeah. Um, that's, that's but I am asthmatic it. and I don't know I got something but I'm just I'm tripping out too cuz I've been out of work since Monday. Are you having fever? I haven't got the fever yet, but just the shortness of breath, the coffee. But I'm asthmatic. I, I haven't got an asthma attack since I was 17, and I just got one at 43 years old. So that was kind of yeah. crazy for me. 
but yeah, you yeah should, so. you, should, you definitely should i i think you're going to be negative but you should definitely go get checked and yeah. they will they're, they're very likely to screen you because of the shortness of breath i'm sure you'll get screened okay well yeah, yeah. i'm on doctors right now but i'm just i'm just making sure just tripping out yeah. thanks for for being here with us and trying to figure yeah. it out you'll be all right thanks Okay, just another question. question, not to do with anything, but does anybody know how's he doing? How's Kat and her family doing? How's everybody? So, um, you guys, right now, um, Department of Health is running the investigation. While, um, of course, most of you know who he is, I'm not even gonna use the name, um, the potential person or the confirmed person will undergo an investigation, will be follow a line of questioning of who he has been in contact with. Um, after that, the outreach will then be coming back. They are um, addressing the family concerns right now. Um, while we have Lieutenant Governor and Senator online and uh, Janice is to now work with um, your employer to make sure we address your guys' needs, to make sure the community is safe, the disinfecting of the company. Um, you guys uh, rest assured that he's in good hands uh, where he's at and um, the family will be addressed. And then the line of questioning will be to the person who has he been in contact with, uh, what was his whereabouts and so forth. In fact, the call I just got just came from the Department of Health Director. Um, so, uh, let it be known that Molokai hasn't been forgotten by government. Um, all hands on deck, um, all resources and, and whatever um, at their disposal. You guys are making me hungry in the bottom, but anyway, um, rest assured, everything mm -hmm. that can be brought to Molokai will be brought to Molokai. Um, the simple rule, again, I'm going to tell you guys, and, and we're all doing them. We're hanging out, we're doing stuff we shouldn't be doing. You guys, we got to get serious. Um, Buckle down, buckle down the hatch because we, are, we will at one point exert all our resources. And that is why you have the Lieutenant Governor and Senator English guys online right now is because we want to peel this thing back. We need to stop it before it goes to a full outbreak. But the family is being addressed as we speak. And now it's to address the rest of you to make sure the rest of you guys are safe. Like LG just said, you're not feeling good. You like to make sure to the brother with your grandmother. It's all right. Go to get the double check test. We ain't gonna stop you guys. Screen them, test them, keep the distance, social distancing, um, wash your guys' hands. You know, we get bad habit, ah, wipe our face, wash your hands. Um, just be safe, you guys. Take it serious. And um, you know, whatever questions you guys have, I'm gonna let you guys know right now. The owners of the company, we have been in talks with them, myself and Senator English prior to bringing this Zoom online. If you folks need a little more um, help on the education of COVID-19, um, LG is the best guy we get there. One as a, our, our Lieutenant Governor, two as the specialty field of uh, healthcare. Um, he is always there when we call on him to give you folks information. But if we need more help, government is offering the help for the conversation back and forth to educate all of you guys. And I'll be honest with you, I'm gonna let you guys all know this right now. Molokai, everybody let go Vegas, right? We all let go Vegas. You guys knew on the way back, the best thing we could have done was self-quarantine ourselves and not put the rest of the community at risk. So in the coming days, I'm gonna let you guys all know, we will be having medical come back and forth. I would appreciate the support from you folks, not to have people protesting them on the line. That is for y'all guys benefit and the rest of the community. This is not good when we're having help coming to help us. And the accusation is that they're bringing the stuff on island. Our own brought them back. So I don't like nobody prejudge anybody else. They're coming for help us, guys, okay? So i just let you guys know that because I know LG is working 24-7. Senator and I are trying to do the best we can along with the rest of our support team, as well as Janice up at the hospital. So whatever question you guys get, ask away and know that you guys owners are doing whatever they can to make sure you guys are protected. So thank you. Kalani, can I say something? 
I, I just want our friendly market family, and they are a family because we see them many, many times a week. I want them to know that Lynn, um, Josh, Kalani, you from, you know, not just today, but for the last five weeks have been incredibly supportive of Molokai, of Molokai General. You've called me, what can I do? Do you have everything you need? You know, wh what's happening with you? And I just want to say, how much we appreciate that. We feel like we have you right behind us. So thank you. And I, I want the folks at Friendly Market to know that. You didn't just show up today. You've, you've been here for a, a while. Thank you, Janice. Yeah, thank you, Janice. You know, just let me add this to everybody that um, uh, it, it's really up to us. And that the idea of social distancing is so far into our culture right that we i mean it's so far into us but it's the thing that's going to keep us healthy so you know like out in here out here in hana you know um i just talked to the mayor today and i was i i live next to hamua beach and if you guys understand where that is in hana it's the the, the best beach on this side so we had like 50 some odd people down there today and yesterday and the day before and they're not exercising they're lying out on the beach they're drinking so I finally talked to the mayor this afternoon and I said, Mayor, I need you to send a policeman down there and go ticket some of these people because if the word will get out and people will stop congregating and it's for our own health. Right now, Hana doesn't have any cases, but it's like you guys, we don't know of the case yet. I, we're pretty sure there's somebody out here. We just haven't found them yet. So that's why we're trying to tell everybody the safest thing to do is keep the distance. And um, you know, so in talking with Mayor Victorino, basically he's going to stop start stepping up enforcement, and you're going to see more police enforcement of the curfews, of of the not, not curfews, but the stay at home orders. And um, you know that when you see that, you know understand that that's to protect the public health and protect you and protect me and protect everybody. Um, Lynn and I work really, really good together. You know, we're both here for you. And um, you know, a shout out to to Kit and Kyle and and Chris because you know they uh, I mean we immediately called and they were like whatever needs to get done, you know they acted very very quickly and their first concern was all of your health and you guys. That's why they shut down the store. That's why they're going to you know sanitize the store and uh, they asked us to help put together this meeting. And um, you know, so thank you to them and for you guys, you know. Hang tough, stay, stay um, strong, stay healthy, and, and stay home. That's the easiest way to do this. You know, we'll get through it if we all stay home. I mean, I just talked to Mayor today, for example, with MEO, because we have a, the bus that goes between Hana and Kahului three times a week. And it's for en anybody who needs it, but it was mostly people, kupuna, people going out for shopping and medical. So I asked him to he'll issue the orders probably tonight or tomorrow to restrict MEO to just uh, twice a week instead of three times a week and only for medical, only for those people that need medical services. Because um, you know, our kupuna, they, they, were, they were going on the bus to go to the other side because we have kupuna hour now, now, right? They can go to the stores early. And a lot of them were going out for, you know, one loaf bread and a couple other stuff, but it was a social thing for them. So we just put an end to that and we're going to instead put in place, okay, what you need, we'll go shop for you. We'll bring it to your house, you know, and for all of you guys, when you talk to your kupuna, tell them, stay home. You know, if they need stuff, you guys go get it for them and take it to them. We'll get through this together and know that Lynn and I and, you know, Lieutenant Governor Josh, we're all going to be here to make sure we all get through this together. So mahalo to all of you and mahalo to, um, you know, Mahalo to the uh, Okimoros and mahalo to all of you for being so concerned and joining us on this uh, conference tonight. Um, Josh, you have anything to add? Oh, no, just thank you for including me in 24 seven call anytime, really anything you need and we'll make sure there's extra services and, and if, if we need to transfer anybody over for extra care, no problem. We'll work that out to make sure we, we do everything we can to make sure people are safe and healthy. Okay, I got then, a question um, before we close yeah. out, though. Um, Any more questions, please? Yeah. 
like, can somebody please explain to me, like, basically, if I live for 14 days, I'm not going to kill anyone or? If you are asymptomatic for 14 days after the, uh, after, even after you catch it, like if you have the virus and then 14 days pass and you're healthy, yeah, you'll be clear then and you won't, you won't be infectious any longer. So after someone tests positive, we put them into quarantine for at least 14 days. And then we usually do a test afterwards to make sure that the virus is gone. Uh, so if you, you know, if you haven't even been diagnosed yet, different question, right? But if, if, our, if our friend, the guy that's got it, you know, after he gets out of the hospital or is finishing up the hospital, he'll either home quarantine for 14 days or we'll check him, make sure it's negative, but then you're okay. Oh, okay. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, his girlfriend came to work on Tuesday. How much uh, okay. of a risk are we? Uh, probably pretty low. If he, so if his girlfriend was not having any symptoms at all, she probably was not either not positive yet or not very infectious. But that is another contact. She should definitely, she's definitely going to get tested, and, and then she'll she'll get a result in a day and she'll tell you and you may also get tested and then we'll know but she you know it's it's a little bit hard to get most people are not even spreading it to their significant other it's, you know it's it's not guaranteed at all so she's probably okay but if she's got symptoms like if she's got sore throat or she's got the fever or shortness of breath then she's got covid and that would be a direct contact with you and you'll get tested then. How's she doing? Is she okay? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, no problem. Can anybody update us? Yeah. One thing that's very important is that we, you know, we, even though it's a bummer, we don't judge and because it's, it's very easy to be scared and frustrated. Um, but, you know, she didn't know that her honey was sick and he probably didn't know it. Yeah, I get it. I, I take to heart what, um, what, Rep Lynn said, I mean, we probably should all be laying low right now, but that's past and, and uh, you guys are all family. So it's going to be okay. You know, the uh, senators had one of the senators get positive and we were all pretty pissed off at him for coming to work, but you know, sometimes that happens. So the best thing to do is just to make sure we check and not spread it anymore. You know, let me share that story, um, Josh, because I think it's important. So, you know, there's 25 senators. Senator Nishihara um, went to Vegas, got sick, came home, got tested. And then, you know, so I'm going to say we put him in tutu man status, right? That's his, that's, that's Senator Nishihara. Yeah. Um, he got sick. And so he decided to go to the people that he was in close contact with and tell them personally because he got the word when he was at the office. So, you know, I mean, we had, a, what, Josh, was 120 people screened, yeah? On one day, and, and the other day it was like 90. It was like yeah, 210 so people, yeah. Yeah, so about 210 people, and out of that, maybe 40 tests or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, pe initially people were pretty pissed off with Senator Nishihara, but then, you know, we all said, okay, we just got to deal with the, what's right in front of us, right? This is what happened. And, you know, he was really apologetic. He was like, I mean, so we just said, you know, Clarence, you, you get well, you take care of yourself. The people got tested. Um, all of the senators, all of us, we went into 14. It ended um, on Monday, 14 day isolation. So I, you know, I came home to Hana. I went to the airport, minimal contact, straight into my home in Peahe and then to Hana, um, all the other senators did the same thing. So, you know, I mean, we just went into self-isolation uh, to protect everybody and ourselves. We're out of that period now. Um, I, I don't think anybody's results came back positive from that whole set of tests. So, you know, we're very fortunate, but things happen, right? So this is one example of how, it, how easily it can, it can it can grow to a lot of people. So that's why we're, we're, you know, trying to talk to all of you now to make sure that uh, we do the screening tomorrow. Uh, everybody gets screened. Um, and those that need to get tested, get tested. And then we just wait the 14 days. 
Yep. That sounds just right. Oh, I get on quick question again. Sorry. No problem. Okay, so I heard that the only way you can get screen or for getting uh for the, to get test is if you got a uh, show symptoms. But I tell you right now, I'm not showing any symptoms right now. But I just like get tested because if I do get COVID nineteen, I don't like be anywhere near my grandma. So even if I don't show symptoms, can I still get tested? You know, I think that you can make a compelling case. Just, just tell them when you're there, and and we have enough tests that you have an extreme circumstance, and people should be understanding because it is true. Because she's 99, I mean, she's probably a young 99, but it's still going to be tough on her if she gets sick. So, uh, you can make that case. But under any circumstances, to be safe, because it could take a little time, do keep a little social distance, six feet away, and cover up your mouth if you know you're near her uh and it should be okay yeah all right thank you man you bet uh go on question two yes go ahead, brother um so if you can get tested tomorrow how long does it take for come out the result if they do the test they'll if they they do the tests and they run them usually the next day it'll have to fly over to Oahu, any test that gets in by 11.30 on Oahu, they can get it the same day, but probably you guys are going to start at 10 in the morning, they'll go over, and then the next day they'll have the result. The, the doctor or nurse that orders the test is going to be able to make the request to do them here in the islands, and we're doing up to 1,500 tests on the islands now, so it should be same day. Otherwise, it takes three to five days at least. Uh, just recently, we were sending all the tests to the mainland. That's why it took so long for, for Senator English and the others. But now we got lots more here. We had to work that out. So tomorrow is what day? Friday. So you should get the result on Saturday. Roger. Thank you. Yep. Bet. Janice, the, the test will be, um, will be processed in Hawaii, right? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. so the results should come back a lot quicker. Yeah. yeah like, don't, like, like Josh said. Yes. It don't, don't be shocked if, you know, kind of, you know, stuff happens right now because there's less flights and everyone's scrambled, but it, it's the next day where they'll process it. Your doctor may, they'll probably, if you don't hear from them, you're, you're looking good because we usually first worry about people that are positive, but it's a close community. It's not going to be a lot of people getting tested. So it should be pretty, pretty streamlined. I have a question. Would it be possible to be like too early to tell, like if you get tested tomorrow, but later, you know, is it? It's possible. Yes. It's um, like, let's say you're hanging out with your friend and it was uh, yesterday, right? And you're asymptomatic then you probably not going to have symptoms. And most people, that's why we usually don't test if you have no symptoms at all, because if you got no symptoms at all, most of the tests come back negative anyway. Uh, but again, if you were in very close proximity of a positive person, like she's not positive, but let's say you're hanging out with a guy for the last few days at the store a lot or something, that close proximity can merit or warrant to test. And people just into their third or fourth day of that before they get the symptoms could, could test positive. So that's why you get the screening because the doctor there or nurse will know exactly what to advise. But also you said that you might not show any symptoms and still have it though. Correct. So yeah, that's we true. As, we wouldn't think, if we don't have symptoms, we wouldn't think to get tested, but then again, like yeah. you said, you, you sometimes don't show any symptoms, so. Right, My, you're right. You, you're actually getting right to the core of the biggest beef I have with the Department of Health. I think, personally, we should test everybody that came into contact with a confirmed positive case. So if you were close, if you were in close proximity to the guy, please I ask agree. to be tested. Yeah. I agree, and, right. Yeah. That's the safest, safest thing, and so. Oh. Go that way and close community. It's not going to be that many tests and they're not going to charge anybody anything for the test. All the co-pays are waived, all that stuff. Don't worry about that. So 
that's there's no no one's supposed to pay for any of this it's just make sure that afterwards you spend uh you have social distancing and home quarantine until you get the negative result and even then we're supposed to kind of be home quarantining so do your best because we don't want to spread them okay thank you Anybody get any other questions? Um, I know Josh, you got to get back. Um, you're being summoned, but um, you know, I just wanted to say this to everybody. You guys live on Molokai. You guys all get common sense. Um, I think um, working out of Honolulu. I think our common sense have paid off. Uh, if the thing looked like fire, there's probably fire. Um, you know, if you traveled, be honest with yourself. Where you came back, if you came back from the hot spots. We know a lot of our kids just came back from Seattle and Washington. self quarantine your kids. Um, that's the only way we're going to stop this thing. So, you know, I just pleading with all you guys. It's going to take all of us together. Um, and we do not um, want to risk another life. Uh, we have people actually, literally ventilators um, that are struggling for their lives as healthy as all of us are. I just practice that and... Um, you know, that's all I'm going to say, um, and whatever we can help with, um, we have been reassured that Molokai has not been forgotten by government. So thank you guys, and thank you, my colleagues, for being here. Okay, everyone. So um, any any other questions? It can be on anything, not just this, yeah? I just want to say thank you to everybody for their support, reassuring us that, you know, it's it's going to be safe and we're going to get through this. I just wanted to say thank you to the FMC gang for doing this for the rest of us and just hope for the best. If things happen, let's do what we got to do and pray for our brother and his family and us all. And thank you. Uh, yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Sure, Uncle PJ, I forgot the number for our, um, you said we got to call Dr. Maguire tomorrow for get tested. What is his number again? 553. Nine, 9080. 9080. Okay, thank you. Google, Google, Google. Google. Sorry, yeah, I wouldn't remember. Fast in Google, you know what I mean? Because. Oh, I keep putting that over right now. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Go put the DM away. But 9080, mahalo, you guys. <laughs> okay, and Kit, do you guys want to add anything? Let's see, is Kit still on? I think so, yeah? Hi, Kyle. Kyle. Oh, Kyle, I'm hey. sorry. Hi, Kyle. Uh, thank everybody for this. Um, we know it's very trying times, and it's obviously new ground for all of us. It's not like any of us have been prepared to do this. Um, please listen to what everybody said, and we encourage everyone to get screened at the very least. And if you get tested, you know, you get tested. We'll deal with whatever happens from there. As far as um, store goals, you know, like I said, we're going to hope to get it uh, clean tomorrow. And when we open, it really just depends on how everything goes. So we'll have the managers stay in contact with you guys. and. We'll just see how things go. So hopefully everyone hang in there. And if anyone has questions, even beyond this, please feel free to contact any manager and we can do whatever we can to help. So good luck everybody and be strong. All right, thanks a lot guys. Have a good All right, everyone, thank you. And then just so you know that the um, Cure has put the number 553-9080 on your, you see the bottom it says chat. So that number is there so you guys can go back and pull the number. Okay, everybody. Well, I want to say thank you all for coming in. You know, uh, we're all a big family in all of this, and we'll always be here to help and make sure everybody gets through it. Thank you, uh, Janice. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Lieutenant Governor. And, you know, everybody, uh, sleep well tonight and know that uh, we'll all get through this together. Mahalo, everyone. Okay. Mahalo. Mahalo. Thank, you. thank you for joining hey, guys. Thank you, Auntie Lynn. Thank you, Klani English. Hello, everyone. Hello. Lieutenant Hello. Governor, thank you, guys. I appreciate everything. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, baby. All right. Take care, bro. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha.